Deep beneath Malaysia's ancient rainforests, engineers have just punched a 16.39-kilometer hole through the heart of a 300-million-year-old mountain range. This is the Genting Tunnel, a colossal project buried under more than 750 meters of solid rock and soil, an amount of pressure equivalent to stacking two Eiffel Towers on top of it. For over two years, giant machines and controlled explosions battled through the earth to create what is now the longest railway tunnel in Southeast Asia. But this mountain did not yield easily. It fought back with crushing pressure, underground floods and zones of shattered rock. So how did engineers wage a war against geology itself and win? This monumental tunnel is the keystone of a much larger vision, the East Coast Rail Link, or ECRL. For more than 60 years, since the birth of modern Malaysia, the country has been a nation divided, not by politics, but by geography. The mighty Titiwangsa mountain range acts as a massive stone spine, physically separating the economically developed West Coast from the more rural East Coast. This division created more than just a travel inconvenience. It created an economic imbalance. The East Coast states were held back, unable to efficiently move goods and people to the country's industrial heartland and major ports. A journey by road that should take hours could stretch to 12 hours or more during holidays, choking off commerce and tourism. The Malaysian government knew that to truly unify the nation and unlock the economic potential of the East, they had to conquer this mountain barrier once and for all. The ECRL was born from this need, a 665-kilometer steel artery designed to pump life, trade and prosperity across the peninsula. And at its heart, the most critical, most difficult and most expensive component was the tunnel that had to go straight through the Titiwangsa spine. But what exactly was waiting for them inside that mountain? To understand the sheer scale of the challenge, you first have to understand the mountain itself. The Titiwangsa range is not just a pile of dirt and rock. It is a complex geological battleground formed by the collision of continents hundreds of millions of years ago. Its core is made of hard, abrasive granite, a type of rock that chews through steel drilling equipment. But the real danger wasn't just the hardness of the rock, it was the mountain's deep wounds. Geological surveys revealed that the tunnel's path would have to cross six major fault zones. A fault zone isn't a clean crack. It's a wide, chaotic area where the rock has been crushed, fractured, and ground into something unpredictable. In some places, it's like solid concrete. A few meters later, it can be as unstable as wet sand. This geological nightmare created a trinity of threats that engineers had to face every single day. The first was water ingress. The countless fractures in the fault zones act as channels for massive underground water reserves. With 750 meters of mountain pressing down, this water is under immense pressure, ready to burst into the tunnel in a high-pressure flood that could halt construction and endanger workers. The second threat was rock bursts. The same immense pressure that squeezes the water also stores huge amounts of energy in the rock itself. Sometimes, this energy can release in an instant, causing the rock to explode violently and without warning, turning solid tunnel walls into deadly projectiles. Finally, there was the simple risk of collapse within the fault zones, where the ground was too soft and broken to support its own weight. To fight this three-headed monster, engineers couldn't rely on just one weapon. They needed a hybrid strategy, combining raw mechanical power with precise tactical force. Their first weapon was a pair of mechanical titans, two of the largest tunnel boring machines, or TBMs, ever used in Southeast Asia. These were not just drills, they were mobile factories, each one stretching 266 meters long, the length of about two and a half football fields, and weighing a staggering 1,600 tons, as much as a herd of 250 adult elephants. Custom-built in Shanghai, these machines were designed for one purpose, to devour hard rock. At the front of each TBM is a massive rotating cutter head, almost nine meters in diameter, about the height of a three-story building. This head spins and grinds the rock face into rubble. As the TBM inches forward, a sophisticated conveyor belt system carries all that crushed rock, known as muck, from the front of the machine all the way to the back and out of the tunnel. But the TBM's most clever trick happens right behind the cutter head. 
a robotic system picks up huge, curved segments of pre-made concrete and precisely assembles them into a ring, forming the permanent waterproof tunnel wall. This single machine performs three tasks at once. It digs, it removes the waste, and it builds the tunnel behind it. These mechanical worms were the key to speed, capable of chewing through 400 to 600 meters of solid granite every month. But even these giants had a weakness. TBMs are incredibly effective in consistent hard rock, but they are clumsy and vulnerable in the unpredictable collapsing ground of a fault zone. A TBM can easily get stuck, damaged, or completely trapped if the ground shifts or caves in. For these treacherous sections, the engineers turn to a much older but more flexible method. Drill and blast. This technique is a carefully controlled cycle. First, a jumbo drilling rig bores a precise pattern of holes into the rock face. Second, those holes are loaded with explosives. Third, the explosives are detonated in a specific sequence a ripple of controlled explosions that fractures the rock exactly where the engineers want it to break. Finally, the rubble is mucked out, and the newly exposed tunnel surface is immediately supported with steel mesh and sprayed concrete, called shotcrete. While slower than a TBM, the drill and blast method gives engineers the crucial ability to see and test the rock face at every step, adapting their plan for every meter of ground. This flexibility was the secret to safely navigating the fault zones. This hybrid approach was the masterstroke of the Genting Tunnel project. The powerful TBMs were unleashed in the long stretches of solid granite, advancing with incredible speed and efficiency. But when geological surveys and probe drilling warned of a dangerous fault zone ahead, the TBM would halt. The specialist drill and blast teams would then take over, meticulously working their way through the broken ground stabilizing it meter by meter before letting the TBM continue on the other side. This strategy required specific solutions for each of the mountain's threats. To combat the risk of high-pressure floods, engineers used a technique called pre-grouting. Long before the TBM reached a water-filled fault zone, they would drill holes far ahead of the tunnel face and inject a type of high-tech cement called ultramicroparticle cement into the surrounding rock. This liquid cement would flow into all the tiny cracks and fractures and then harden, creating a solid waterproof barrier that sealed the water out, allowing the TBM to pass through a dry, stable zone. To prevent the terrifying rock bursts, they used a method called stress relief blasting. The immense pressure deep in the mountain was the cause, so the solution was to release that pressure safely. Small, carefully placed explosive charges were detonated ahead of the main excavation. These small blasts would intentionally fracture the rock in a controlled way, allowing the stored energy to dissipate gradually, instead of all at once in an explosion. The tunnel supports themselves were also part of the solution. Instead of using rigid supports that would shatter under the force of a rock burst, they installed special, yielding rock bolts, and flexible fiber-reinforced shotcrete. These supports are designed to bend and deform, absorbing the kinetic energy of an explosion, much like a car's crumple zone absorbs the energy of a crash. Finally, to cross the fault zones, where the ground was like a jumble of loose blocks, the drill and blast method was combined with ground reinforcement. In some cases, this involved a technique called forepoling, where long steel pipes are drilled into the unstable ground above and around the tunnel path, forming a protective steel canopy, like an umbrella, before the rock beneath it is excavated. This painstaking, proactive approach of looking ahead, treating the ground, and then excavating was the key to conquering the mountain's many dangers. A project of this magnitude, battling such extreme conditions, was never going to be cheap or simple. The entire ECRL project, a flagship of China's Belt and Road Initiative, has had a complex financial history. Early estimates put the total cost as high as 81 billion ringgit. Following a change in government and intense renegotiations in 2019, the construction cost was drastically reduced to 44 billion ringgit, saving the project from cancellation. Today, the official construction cost stands at 50.27 billion ringgit, though the total figure, including land acquisition and loan interest, is closer to 75 billion ringgit. 
the project is largely funded by an 85% loan from the Export-Import Bank of China. On July 12, 2025, after more than two years of relentless work, the final wall of rock fell and the Genting Tunnel was complete, marking the breakthrough of the last of 41 tunnels for the entire ECRL project. With the digging done, the project now enters its final phase, laying the 665 kilometers of track, installing the electrical and signaling systems, and completing the 20 stations along the line, all on schedule for its first passenger services in January 2027. The breakthrough of the Genting Tunnel is more than just an engineering milestone. It is the moment a national vision starts to become a reality. This tunnel, holding Malaysian records for being the longest and deepest of its kind, is the final link in a chain that will bind the country together. Soon, passenger trains traveling at 160 km per hour will slash travel times, and freight trains will create a seamless land bridge between two of the country's most important ports, Kuantan Port and Port Klang. The hole they bored through the Titiwangsa Mountains will become a channel for growth, opportunity, and a more connected Malaysia. If you are fascinated by this incredible feat of engineering, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our next deep dive into the world's most amazing mega projects. Let us know in the comments what other engineering marvels you'd like to see us cover. Thanks for watching.